but for allowance method you are going to have this uh, agenda entry uh, which is uh, either you are going to have based on sales and based on accounts tables, you always need to have this general, general entries which is uh, debit back debt also and credit allowance allowance for that full debt Oh, sorry, I'm so sorry. But... The full that okay. So, this is the uh, oops, this is the general entry that normally incurred whenever you are dealing with allowance method and this is the general entry whenever you are dealing with direct write-off method you are dealing with direct write-off method apa maksudnya kat sini? ok, maksudnya kat sini bila mana soalan itu ataupun situasi yang memerlukan transaksi itu dibuat based on direct write-off ok, so that you just need to open the T account uh, 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 uh. Okay, this this is the general entry process. Okay, you need to open the general uh, account, and you need a bad debt account. Oh, sorry. And you need to open another uh, account, which is a account uh, receivable. Okay, and you need to put it here. This is your account receivable and you need to put in the credit side for account receivable as a bad debt. Okay. okay. Isunya kat sini, saya nak you all faham kenapa record, uh, treatment ini dibuat sebelah debit dan se uh, account receivable ni dia letakkan sebelah credit. Kalau ada siapa-siapa boleh jawab, tolong tolong respons and kalau you oh, oh, boleh jawab yang ni maknanya you dah faham almost the whole chapter untuk quick side for account receivable and account receivable I letak tak sebelah and put it as a bad debt as a contract for this account. Kenapa? Ada siapa-siapa boleh jawab tak? Tak ada. Sebabnya bad debt ni adalah expenses. Kalau you all masih ingat lagi dalam awal tadi, saya cakap bad debt ni adalah expenses to the company. Okay? Expense to the company. And every expense of the company need to be in the debit side. Okay? And every expense on the company will be your debit side. Since the debit side will be expense of the company and the amount of your asset, amount of your asset, account receivable ni asset kan? Account receivable ni asset, asset use uh, nature increment asset sebelah debit. Tapi bila mana adanya hutang lapuk, sepatutnya you, hutang you, you boleh collect daripada debtor you 100,000. Tapi you hanya boleh collect 800 sahaja. Which is you are going to reduce your asset. Ah, contohnya saya hutang dengan Najwa satu ribu. Eh, Najwa, uh, 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 Najwa hutang dengan saya satu ribu, which is I'm supposed to to get a collection from Najwa one thousand end of this month. But due to uh, Najwa uh, corporation uh, difficulties, okay, so there is some bad debt recognition imposed in that uh, in that business operation. So. Uh, I cannot, I cannot collect the whole amount that Najwa owe to my company. So instead of collecting one thousand, I just boleh collect lapan ratus sahaja, which is two hundred uh, ringgit tu adalah bad debt. Okay, jadinya aset saya tu berkurang lah, aset saya berkurang. 
ha, aset saya berkurang sebab tu uh, nature dia kena duduk sebelah kredit. Ha, saya nak you faham macam tu. You 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 faham dan you bukan hafal tanpa sebab. You hafal bersebab. Ha, you hafal dan you faham dengan reason yang betul. Okay, saya ulang kenapa bad debt ni duduk sebelah debit. Bad debt ni nature account untuk bad debt ni adalah expenses account and expenses account should be on the debit side and since you are dealing with uh, account uh, asset account which is uh, account receivable asset account ni refer kepada account receivable dan RM1,000 sebelah ni kan contohlah okay, 100, 100k tapi ada Uh, tak semua daripada RM100,000 tu kita dapat collect daripada penghutang kita. Kita kena estimate some portion of bad debt. So we are going to reduce our asset by estimate uh, uh, some bad debts. Okay? Uh, itu adalah konsep bad debt yang you kena faham. Dan bila mana bad debt ni occur, you, you kena uh, apa? You kena cl uh, close the account and you need to get the, all the Uh, you need to get all the uh, uh, new figures for closing balance for account silver in order to be recorded in the financial position. Okay. Uh, so kat sini lah. Contohnya sini RM100,000 eh. Okay. Sini uh, sini saya letak lah dalam uh, 20k Okay. So sini RM100,000. Sini RM80,000. RM80,000 balance. Balance carried forward. Okay, so balance, uh, balance brought forward 800k. So 800k ni lah yang you akan transfer kepada financial position you. Okay. Uh, sebelum you transfer kat financial position ni, yang ni you kena settle lah. Yang ni you kena settle. Uh, so tugas you sekarang ni, uh, lesson yang you kena tahu pada malam ini adalah sama ada macam mana nak recognize bad debt amount based on direct write off method ataupun melalui allowance method. Ah, okay. Okay. So kat sini untuk lebih uh, memudahkan you lagi, I just nak nak trigger you apa yang you all nak belajar pada malam ni. Okay. Since uh, uh, you all dah ada maklumat asas macam ni kita dah settle direct write off method sekarang ni saya nak proceed kepada allowance method pula ok allowance method ni ingat eh allowance method dia based on sales allowance ataupun based on account receivable allowance and what are the accounting treatment for allowance method you always need to have a bad debt account you always need to have a bad debt account and you always need to have a credit uh, allowance for that full debt Ah, okay. You always need to have a credit on allowance for that for that. So, kat sini, I nak tunjuk satu video. Okay. Video ni kejap eh. Maaf mengganggu uh, Kita orang tak boleh dengar suara video Eh tak boleh dengar ah, Tak boleh dengar Macam mana saya nak share supaya you all dengar Kejap-kejap uh, 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 You all tak boleh dengar eh? 
Tak boleh. Eh, tak dengar. Tak dengar langsung. <laughs> Sekejap eh. Uh... Eh sebelum ni masa I share video you all dengar kan? Sebelum ni masa I share video sebelum, -sebelum, -sebelum ni you all dengar kan? Hari tu tak. Oh, hari tu, tu tak, tak dengar. Tak dengar dah. Hari tu tak dengar juga kan doktor. Lah kenapa you all tak cakap? Tak cakap. Okay. Oh ni ni okey I dah tahu dah. Uh, so so okey okey okay. sorry sorry sorry. Automatically optimize okey this one. lapu disesuaikan ha, dengan akaun hutang ragu dengar berkaitan dengan account receivable mengikut direct rate of method dan so, saya ulang kat depan sikit eh saya duduk kat, kat depan sikit account receivable basis And secondly is percentage on sales basis. Allowance method or provision method is an estimated uncollectible account becomes bad debt on the basis of percentage on the balance of accounts receivable and percentage of sales. Ini bermaksud Allowance method adalah anggaran akaun yang tidak dapat dikutip menjadi hutang lapuk berdasarkan pertama peratusan bagi akaun belum terima dan yang kedua adalah peratusan jualan. Bad debt expenses is to be matched with doubtful debt accounts. Ini bermaksud pembelanjaan hutang lapuk disesuaikan dengan akaun hutang ragu berbanding disesuaikan dengan akaun receivable mengikut direct write off method. Dan peruntukan hutang ragu ataupun allowance for debt full debt adalah kontra dengan akaun belum terima dalam financial position. Recording bad debt expenses. Bagaimanakah kita hendak merekod bad debt expenses dalam allowance method? Okey, kita bandingkan dengan keadaan direct rate of method terlebih dahulu yang telah kita pelajari dalam video sebelum ini. Mengikut keadaan direct rate of method, kita debitkan bad debt expenses dan kita kreditkan accounts receivable. Manakala mengikut Keedah allowance method kita debitkan bad debt expenses dan kita kreditkan allowance for doubtful debt. So kat sini kelas, uh, I nak you all perhatikan eh. Okay, ini adalah uh, partner account untuk direct write off method which is kalau you guna direct write off method, you straight away debit for bad debt expenses and credit for account receivable. Kalau you guna allowance method sama ada you guna sales ataupun receivable uh, uh, basis, ingat eh allowance ni ada dua sama ada you guna sales ataupun receivable basis, ini adalah uh, general entry yang terlibat which is a debit bad debt expenses and credit allowance for debt for debt. Pertama sekali, kita pergi kepada keadaan pertama dalam allowance method iaitu percentage on the balance of accounts receivable. Saya hendak pelajar mengingati formula ini iaitu percentage of allowance darab dengan closing balance of accounts receivable sama dengan Closing balance of allowance for doubtful debt. Ini adalah step yang pertama. Okey. Dia cakap ini adalah basic uh, formula yang you all kena hafal 
Bila mana you are dealing dengan allowance method untuk cari back that amount. You all kena tahu berapa percentage allowance yang diberi dalam soalan. Dan you all kena daratkan dengan closing balance of account receivable. Untuk you dapatkan closing balance of allowance for that for that. Berikut disenaraikan steps to calculate back debt expenses mengikut allowance method dengan percentage on the balance of accounts receivable basis. First step is calculate closing balance of allowance for doubtful debt. Second step is draw T accounts for allowance for doubtful debt. Third step is fill in all the particulars or transaction in the T accounts. For example, balance brought forward and balance carry forward. And the fourth step is calculate the missing figure that is the bad debt expenses. Plus, uh, suka saya ingatkan kat sini, balance brought forward ni adalah opening balance, okay? Balance carried forward ni adalah balancing figure yang you dapat daripada T account yang you nak close tu and then daripada balance, balance carried forward tu you akan turunkan ke bawah the balance which is in uh, in financial position you need to get the amount of balance brought forward. Example 1, percentage on the balance of, of, of accounts receivable method. Balance brought forward for allowance for doubtful debt is 500. Balance carry forward for accounts receivable is 110,000. And estimated uncollectible debt is 1% of accounts receivable. So first of all, you have to calculate Percentage of allowance times closing balance of accounts receivable equals to closing balance allowance for doubtful debt. The calculation is 1% that is the percentage of allowance times 110,000 equals to 1,100. 1,000 and 100 is closing balance allowance for doubtful debt and this is the first step ingat eh dia cakap 1100 tu adalah closing balance so adjustment is needed to get the amount of bad debt expenses just follow the steps that I've been given you before. First step is draw the accounts for allowance for doubtful debt. Then fill in balance brought forward 500 that has been given. And then fill in balance carry forward that is 1100 that we have just calculated before. Ah, After that, that, balance the accounts, that is 1,100 left and right, and then the missing figure is 600. This is bad debt expenses. Okay, nilai inilah yang kita cari dan nilai inilah yang kita nak record sebagai debit bad debt expenses and we are going to have a credit allowance for that for that uh, as with a uh, 600 so this is how we get bad debt expenses using this method to record bad debt expenses in journal entry on 31st December, debit, bad debt expenses 600 and credit allowance for doubtful debt 600. Narration, 
to record bad debt expenses. Saya ada satu soalan pada you all semua. Okay, since kita ada bad debt expenses on debit side and credit allowance for that full debt, kenapa letak sini debit uh, credit side straight away for account receivable? Kenapa uh, kita tidak letak credit side sebagai account receivable? Sebab dia expense. Bukan. Expense should be on debit side. Sekarang ni soalan saya. Debit side uh, 600 and credit side allowance for that full debt. Kenapa bukan credit side tu refer kepada account receivable tapi kita letak allowance for that full debt 600. Sebab Method. Sebab method yang kita dealing sekarang ini, ini adalah method based on allowance basis. Kalau kita dealing dengan write off, direct write off method, kita baru boleh letak account receivable. Ingat eh, yang saya tulis je kat whiteboard saya tadi, walaupun tulisan saya tak cantik tapi sangat-sangat penting. So, you kena hati-hati tengok soalan tu. Kalau soalan tu minta you... Estimate bad debt, uh, bad debt based on direct write-off and then you are going to credit your account receivable. But if in that questions provided all the information that relate to the allowance uh, allowance method and then you need to get your credit side as for allowance for that full debt. Ingat eh? Ha. Now we look at example 2 percent. Ni eh, contoh kedua lah Okay, tadi tu 1% for percentage allowance Multiply with 110,000 for balance Carry forward accounts receivable And it equals to 1,100 balance Carry forward allowance For doubtful debt And this is the first step Step yang sama macam yang kita buat untuk contoh yang pertama tadi. Tapi kat sini ada satu kelainan. Saya nak you all cuba perhatikan betul. Nampak sama tapi... Next step is to draw the account for allowance for doubtful debt. Then, fill in the balance brought forward that is 1,500. And then fill in the balance carry forward that is 1,100 that we have just calculated before. And then balance the account that is 1,500 left and right. And then we can get the missing figure at the left side. That is 400. Because it is at the left side, so it is not the bad debt expenses. It is called decrease in allowance for doubtful debt. Yes. Whenever you are going to have a balancing figure on debit side for allowance for doubtful debt, means that you are going to have decrease in allowance for doubtful debt. It's no longer referring to bad debt uh, amounts. Okay, bad debt ni adalah bila mana you are dapat uh, balancing figure sebelah kredit sahaja. Sebab bila you dapat sebelah kredit, bad debt tu nature dia, dia lawan akan create a debit. So, debit bad debt expenses. Okay. Uh, so, apa uh, treatment untuk uh, a case bila mana you dapat uh, balancing figure macam ni? So, and the general entry is on 31st December debit allowance for doubtful debt 400 and credit decrease in allowance for doubtful debt 400. Di sini pelajar akan nampak perbezaan dalam merekod 
journal. The second basis in allowance method is percentage of credit sales and is divided into two. First is percentage on net credit sales basis dengan net credit sales. Balance brought forward for allowance. Okay. Class, untuk contoh ni very straightforward. I rasa you all boleh tengok sendiri dalam uh, YouTube ni. Uh, sekarang ni I just nak uh, uh, recap balik uh, apa yang I cuba uh, tunjukkan uh, dalam uh, kelas pada kali ini. Okay. So, kita hari ini kita akan kita belajar berkenaan uh, macam mana nak record bad debt from account receivable account. Okay. So, bad debt ni uh, adalah situasi bila mana uh, company tidak dapat collect hutang daripada penghutang. Okay, company tak, tidak dapat collect hutang yang sepatutnya dibayar oleh you punya client kepada you punya company. So, suppose uh, you need to collect 1,000 you just able to collect 800. So, 200 should be considered as a bad debt. That just uh, assumption. So, in reality, you need to estimate. Okay, in reality, kalau you kerja sebagai accountant, lepas ni, you kena estimate. Berapa sebenarnya you utang yang you tak boleh nak collect. Okay, sama ada you nak collect, uh, uh, sama ada you nak estimate based on direct right of method, ataupun you nak uh, estimate based on allowance method. For uh, direct right of method, so uh, the general entry, Uh, should be uh, uh, should be uh, included which is a uh, debit back the expenses and credit account suitable yang ni ni straight away sahaja di mana you akan dapat pengurangan dalam account suitable account suitable ni nature dia sebelah mana sebenarnya nature dia sebelah debit sebab sebab apa nature sebelah debit asalnya sebab account suitable ni aset kita aset kita bila mana aset kita berkurang, kita kena letak dia sebelah kredit. Okay, itu you kena faham. Kenapa account receivable ni asalnya aset, tapi kat sini kena letak sebelah kredit. Sebab kita nak kurangkan aset kita. Aset kita ni dah berkurang dengan adanya transaksi back debt. Okay, so method keduanya adalah allowance method. Allowance method ni ada dua, based on sales, sama ada net sales ataupun credit sales. Ataupun second option is uh, based on account server yang saya tunjuk yang saya tunjukkan dalam video tadi. Okay. Dan daripada sini you akan buat closing account based on your account server in order to get your balancing uh, closing uh, amount of account server in order to be recorded in financial, financial position. In financial position dia duduk sebelah apa? Current asset eh. Ha. You tengok betul-betul. Okay. Ha. Okay. Dia duduk dekat kategori current asset. Yang ni ni you jangan silap dan you jangan lupa. Okay. So end of the day kita nak amount of account receivable. Untuk dapatkan amount yang terkini untuk account receivable ni kita kena lalui. Sama ada kita nak lalui direct right of method to estimate that, that ataupun kita nak lalui allowance method based on base, uh, sales basis or accounting uh, account receivable basis. Okay. So uh, sebenarnya ini adalah uh, the whole chapter for account receivable. So saya cuba ringkaskan, saya cuba uh, permudahkan maklumat-maklumat yang penting untuk you all faham. Uh, macam mana nak record dan macam mana nak dealing dengan bad debt expenses. Okay. Bad debt always remember bad debt will be your expenses to your company. Okay. Whenever you are going to have expenses on your bad debt means that you are going to lose some part of your debtors collection. So that's why you are going to have on credit side for your account receivable. Account receivable ni Nature dia, ini hutang yang you all sepatutnya terima. Tapi disebabkan ada bad debt, 
you hanya boleh record 800 ataupun 80 ribu sahaja dalam financial position. Semudah itu kelas. Okay. So, okay. So, nanti you all boleh uh, refer dekat video yang saya uh, sharekan dalam uh, iklip tu. And untuk kelas pada minggu depan, kita akan sambung lagi dengan fixed asset pula. Uh, fixed asset pun mudah juga. Uh, ni kita belajar current asset. Kan? Current asset and specifically on account silver. Nanti next week kita akan belajar uh, uh, fixed asset and we are going to learn on how to deal with a depreciation. And depreciation also one part of your uh, company expenses and you also need to uh, estimate the, allow, uh, the amount of depreciation based on the provision uh, that you are going to make on the depreciation accounts. Okay. Asalnya saya nak gabungkan terus tapi saya rasa memadai untuk pada malam ini you all uh, renung-renungkan uh, dan cuba fahami cuba dalami dan cuba praktis ok cuba praktis uh, on yourself uh, uh, macam mana nak deal dengan account receivable and uh, back debt uh, treatment either based on direct right of method or allowance method ok so Uh, saya rasa itu sahaja pada uh, kali ini uh, Kelas pada malam ni uh, sangat ringkas Dan tajuk ini sangat uh, mudah Saya kira sangat mudah dan saya harap Saya harap you all semua terus kekal bersemangat Dan terus kekalkan momentum you all Untuk terus belajar dan terlalu, terus uh, cemerlang daripada masa ke semasa lah Okay So uh, saya fahamlah malam ni tak berapa sesuai. So, I'm so sorry for 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 not having a class on uh, last Monday because uh, I have a very packed schedule or on that day. So I'm not able to have a class and that's why I'm decide to have a replacement class uh, on this time. And on next week, uh, even we are going to have a holiday on next week uh, on Monday, but uh, I presume uh, we still continue for class. Uh, because we still uh, have uh, another two chapters uh, that need to be covered uh, uh, for the last uh, two weeks in your uh, study periods. Okay. So, uh, so I think that's all. And inshallah, we are going to meet again on next week. Jangan lupa tengok apa? Tengok dan cuba fahami. Uh, video yang saya kongsikan dalam uh, klip tadi uh, insyaAllah you all akan dapat sedikit kefahaman dan you all kena practice lah uh, you all kena practice ok so with that I just close this session with Tasbih Kafarah and Surah Tala'as Tasbih Kafarah Tasbih Kafarah ok thank you semua Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Thank you, Dr.